Uh, so two days, and many of us know uh, publishing papers getting harder and harder. <laughs> so you have to face armor of reviewers. In New England Journal of Medicine, and annually, and they review about 5,000 papers. And then by the time it reached to this statistician, I think statistician is this man in the red group, and 95% we agree. <laughs> 95 paper get rejected. Okay, so only the 5% uh, which survived these five reviewers and are reviewed by statisticians, and then they kill about 20% of those papers. Okay. And in many other uh, journals, you don't really know where the statistician is, and we're probably shooting you at, from the water. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's very important to know uh, where these reviewers are shooting at. So today, I'd like to introduce you a statistical checklist by Nature Cell Biology. Okay. So if you want to up, uh, download this, actually you have a handout, uh, which is a cleaner version I created, but by the way, if you want to see this original version, you can go to their website and then click on this link, statistical guidelines, and then you can download this list. Okay. And the original list was actually um, it's all over among the top on the topics. So what I did is I sorted this list uh, according to a topic. So as you see, we have five big areas that we are going to cover today. And the first one is statistical graphs, second one, p-values in significance level, and third, randomization in a sample size, and then the last one, selection of statistical test. Okay, so uh, we are going over each item by item. So please have your handout ready. And then in your handout, I actually put the website, uh, you can find the videos of today's lecture. So I'm videotaping this lecture on my PC, so if you want to distribute, if you like my talk and then want to encourage a lot of people to watch, uh, that is a site. And then actually there are about 45 or more videos already uploaded to this site based on my teaching. So I teach last nine years in MSCI, and. Um, I cover advanced statistics and mainly regression. So if you want to learn linear regression, Cox and logistic, and, and then there is a videos for that, and with SPSS tutorials. Okay. All right, so let's start with the first item, statistical graphs, and the first one, the war effect size distorted by truncation of y-axis. Okay. So if ever thought of doing this, okay, and please have a second thought because the journal is asking you not to <laughs> or consider not to. Okay, so this is easy. All right, and if what the second, what the next one, uh, were error birds absent, were error birds unleveled, and were the statistical measures mean standard error, standard deviation, et cetera, reported, and were they clearly leveled? Okay. So the, usually this goes with error birds because error birds are typically created for standard error, standard deviation, confidence intervals. So the next slide I'm going to talk about what are those error birds are and why they are important. Okay, so let's look at the first graph. So this graph is just a, a bar graph showing a mean of some uh, outcome variable and comparing group A and group B. Okay, how many of you think and there is a statistical difference between group A and group B? <laughs> can't tell, right? Right. Why you can't tell? What is missing on this graph? No error birds. No error birds. Right. Right. So we all know error birds are important. Why is that? In order to compare, we need to know data variation, right? So the more uh, greater variations, it's harder to detect this difference. Okay, so I put the error bars. Okay, so when you see error bars, ah, but let me ask you a question first. And how many of you think now there is statistical difference between A and B? Do? Good, you made my day. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So now you have to know what the error birds are for. So here, it's say, bar graph is with standard error. So these error birds are for standard error. Okay? So how many of you think there's a statistical difference now? 
So standard error itself, okay, mean plus minus standard error, it doesn't really link to p-value. Okay? So based on this, we can't really conclude there is statistical difference. But I'm, I'm sure you're thinking, I thought overlapping two error words means no statistical difference, and this one doesn't overlap, so there must be a significant difference. Okay? So if you are thinking that, then you need to plot the confidence interval. So confidence interval is an error bird, and you can link to p-value. So if two error birds with confidence intervals are not overlapping, and then you can say there are statistical significance between two groups. Yeah. But in some occasion, overlapped confidence intervals still show statistical significant difference. So be careful, right? So only the statement we can make is non-overlapping confidence interval there is statistical difference. Okay. So marginal overlap, it can be still statistically significant. And although confidence interval is much better than standard error. So now you can uh, link to the p-value, graph to the p-value. Okay. How can you compute confidence interval? Confidence interval is simply two times standard error. So if you see some people using standard error, what you can do is you, you can simply make this error twice as large, okay? So that will convert to confidence interval, 95% confidence interval, which link to p-value. Okay, and the next one, how about this one? So these error birds are for standard deviation. Could be. Could be, that's right. So standard deviation have nothing to do with p-value. So what the standard deviation mean is if you, your data are normally distributed, and you know that your samples, okay, from your sample. We're not talking about big populations. So the data value of your samples, 57% of them are aligned uh, between this range, 67%, okay? So we are not saying 95%. If you want to share the 95%, and you need to make twice as large. So two times standard deviation, and that describes range of your samples. Okay? And 95% of your samples are falling in that range. Right? So when you review uh, papers and typical table one, okay? age, mean, plus, minus, standard deviation. We do use standard deviation when we describe with our sample. Okay? So if the mean of age is 50, standard deviation of 10, and what do you think? Okay, what is the thought you have? Then you know 50 plus minus 10 times 20, and that means 95% of your subject age fall in age of 30 to age of 70. So uh, standard deviation is very useful so that you know uh, who are the patients and you collect in your study. But it doesn't directly link to p-value. So in this uh, graph, and p-value is 0.01, right? And then this the same, because they are the same, so p-value is 0.15. So it is very important to tell, that's why the journal is telling, when you put the standard uh, error bars, and you need to tell the readers what the error bars mean. Standard deviation, standard error, or confidence interval. Otherwise, it does not convey any information. Okay? And then, uh, so more recently, actually, statisticians are recommending different type of graph. And this, which is a whiskers, box whiskers plot. And box whiskers plot is the graph that we like the most. <laughs> so, a uh, box whiskers plot have a three lines, a box with three lines, and the middle line uh, represents a median. Okay? And then, bottom line represents 25th percentile of your data, and then, top line represents 75th percentile of your data. Okay? So you can actually compare which groups have a larger mean and smaller mean. Okay? Also, you can see data variations. And then these two data points are outlier. So you can actually see the distribution of data by looking at box whiskers plot. So how many of you think this error bars can tell you distribution of data? Do you think data are symmetric by looking at these top four graphs? 
Now, because error bar is a force to be symmetric. It's a mean plus minus error bar. Yeah. So it does not convey any information about distribution, although the box whiskers plot can tell you the distribution. So in this plot, and you know the data are slightly skewed. So the majority of patients have a lower value, but there are some patients have a higher value as well. Yeah? So why the knowing distribution is so important? Because it links directly to the choice of statistical test, and then that can impact on p-value, in which we will talk further later. And then more recently, the reviewers are telling, showing a data. So, show, uh, so if you can, it's probably a good idea to think about the dot plot combined with the box whiskers plot. So this way, uh, and then you're showing everything. Okay. So how do you decide what are the outliers? Thank you. I, I was hoping someone would ask that. Okay. So outliers are determined uh, using uh, whiskers. So this is a whiskers. Okay. So let me tell you how the computer draw whiskers. So the way computer draw whiskers is it creates a box on top of this box which has 1.5 times uh, larger than this box. Okay, so this box is 1.5 times larger. Okay, and then the whisker is drawn in the data point which is a maximum within this box. So you notice there is no, no other observations falling in this box because this is a maximum. And then similarly, you do the same thing to uh, below this box, and then these whiskers are drawn at minimum values and falling <coughs> in, laying in this box. And then the value which is outside of this box are called outliers. Okay. So that's how the computer plot uh, outliers. Right. And the nature of biology is asking to, um, to put the sample size for each group and also uh, if you can, and let's put the p-value in the figure. And so that reader do not have to look that in the footnote. Okay. If you take the difference between all your data, say, are positive, and the standard deviation remains minus the standard deviation of the negative number, then mm -hmm. the distribution is normal. Um, so standard deviation, would you say it again? Yeah. Yes. Suppose all your output is positive. Mm-hmm. Output is positive. Okay. Yeah. So if your standard deviation the mean, mean minus standard deviation is negative. And you don't have a normal distribution. Oh, uh, yes, yes, right. So a lot of times you see That's that, right. And then this will tell you you can't use statistical methods that require. That's right, quality. yes. So I've seen the strange data, especially for drug doors, for example. And then it would say uh, mean lolazepens, and let's say five milligrams. And, but standard deviation is 10. So five minus 10, you have minus five milligram. And then uh, what we typically do is two times standard deviation. So two times 10, that's uh, 20. So five minus 20 is minus 15. So can we say 95% of your patient's lolazepam levels is between minus 15 to 25. <laughs> and that is a strange, right? And if this happened because distributions are clearly skewed but you compute it to standard deviation. What is a standard deviation? Standard deviation is simply average between each observation to a mean value. Yeah. So computer can com compute that even for the data are skewed or not. It doesn't matter, you can get standard deviation. But if the data are skewed, and then you start seeing this strange phenomena. So we recommend people not to use standard deviation if the data are not normally distributed. And then clearly, in that case, how about using percentile, 25th percentile and 75th percentile? So we can say 75th percentile. We call the interquartile range. So you can use median and interquartile range for descriptive data. So 25th percent of the last band may be 2 milligram. And then 75th percentile of the last band could be 15 milligram. So you can say uh, 5 is a median and interquartile range is. Um, what did I say? Two and fifteen. 
So you know 25% of your patients and they use two milligram or larger level of lorazepam. And 75th percentile of patient, I mean, more than 75% of patient use lorazepam greater than 50 milligrams.